Well morning folks, welcome to the old classic car channel and today I'm down at the NEC in Birmingham for the gigantic classic car show that takes place here every November. The plan, as in previous years, is to try and get around everything that I can in the space of one day. This is a three day event but the idea is to try and grab a look at everything within one day, photograph all the vehicles that really stand out for me and then put a video together based on that. So uh, let's go and have a look and see what we can find here today at the NEC Classic Car Show. Okay, let's begin, and here we have a, just a general overall view of one of the halls, one of maybe five halls at the NEC Classic Car Show. This was taken about midday, so you can see just how busy it is, and uh, why I chose to do a photo video as opposed to a walk-around video, because it does get quite noisy, and there's a lot of hustle and bustle, and hubbub, and music, and so on. Okay, and now at the entrance was this fantastic Lotus Elan Plus 2X, Graham Hill Lotus Elan Plus 2, no doubt. Hence the cardboard cutout on the side there, which was fantastic. But yeah, proper little bit of racing history there. Okay, next up we're in one of the halls, the first hall I think this is, and this is a Lloyd Alexander. This particular car dates to 1959, has a twin cylinder engine, only about 19 brake horsepower, so from its 600cc engine. What a great little car that is, and that's one of the advantages of going to some of these larger shows like the NEC Classic Car Show that we're at here. You do see some proper, proper rarities, and you might never see them again. There's a rear view of the same little car, but what a great survivor that is. Really neat colour scheme as well, and I love the lamps on the back of the wings there. And this was another real treat to see this one. This is a Morris Oxford 1959 all steel Morris Oxford Traveller Estate. How cool is that? Many years ago there used to be one or maybe two of those dumped outside my great uncle's house in mid Wales. And I often wonder what happened to those. Were they scrapped or did they go on to be restored? Perhaps it was even that car. And we've seen this one before at a few different events. We've seen this one at Sywell, I think. And Race Retro, possibly Boo 8, a very original early AC Cobra, very, very nice indeed with period racing history and I just love the livery on that particular car. Just looks so right for that age of car. Dates to 62. Okay, this was in the Ford Hall. You may notice none of these photos are in order. I've really tried to jumble things up. We've got a Zephyr 6 convertible, a Mark 1 Ford Zephyr 6 in the foreground there. What a great car that is and there's a Mark 1 console parked alongside that. Next up, 672YUJ, a somewhat modified special built version, I think, of the Austin Healey, the BN1 series Austin Healey from 1954. Quite an interesting wraparound windscreen on that one, many louvers in the bonnet, and it also looks like louvers in the back of the wing, or is that just a reflection? I'm not quite sure. Who remembers these then? This was Alpha's answer to the BMW 7 series. This is the Alfa Romeo 6, very BMW esque at the front end there, and are those. The US market bumpers, they certainly look like the uh, very large bumpers that American market cars often have. Yeah, very rare survivor. And look at this, one of three fantastic woodies on the Austin County's Car Club stand. This beauty is based on an Austin A70 Hampshire of the early 1950s, but what a beautiful old survivor that is. And over to the Jowett Car Club stand, we'll see several cars from this particular stand throughout this video, and this is a super rare Jowett Jason. They only built 105 of these, and there are two known survivors. Look at the angle of that radiator grille. What a crazy looking car that is. Very, very distinctive indeed. I've got some period photos of one of those. Here's an interior view of the same car. It's the, uh, this is the only one of these I've ever seen as well. Again, 
just one of the reasons why it's worth going to some of these big indoor events. It does take a, it does take a bit of energy to walk around all day, but you do see some spectacularly rare cars, including this beautiful old Jowett. And talking of beautiful old cars, uh, we have a somewhat barn findy Rover 10 here. Uh, I wonder what the future holds for this one. I guess it's probably a bit too far gone, so it'll probably end up being a spare parts donor for other cars and help keep other cars on the road. But somehow it survived to 2023, but mm, it's not looking great, is it? Look at the state of that. It's amazing it could even be moved, but thankfully it's got a separate chassis, so maybe that's holding it all together. Okay, well next up in this collection of photos taken at the 2023 NEC Classic Motor Show is this wonderful Citroen DS. I love that sign in the background as well. There'll be another photo of the H-Van a little bit later in this particular video. Those DS's are fantastic, aren't they? If you know of any of the cars, if you know anything about any of the cars featured here, please drop a note in the comments. Okay, on the left plate, or possibly slightly older, we have a Peel Trident. All 49cc of it, apparently capable of around 100 miles per gallon. Um, I'm not sure I'd want to be sat in there on a hot day particularly, but what a great little car, and surely cars like that are the answer for inner city driving. Okay, TV8371, an MGJ4 midget, from 1933. In the background there, you can just see a Sunbeam Venezia, of all things. We'll get a closer look at one of those a little bit later in this video. There were some gorgeous Maseratis on display at the NEC this year, and this is just one of them. A Maserati 3500 Vignali Spider. Isn't that just a gorgeous looking car? There were also examples of Mistral there as well. So yes, yeah, some real, real rarities on the Maserati club stand. This was in the furthest hall, but it was definitely worth walking over there. Early doors, this was before the main doors opened, hence it's looking fairly quiet. We've got a trio of fantastic PA voxels here. Look at this lineup of Cresters. All the early three rear window cars. Uh, instead of a wraparound rear window, it was the rear window was formed out of three pieces, which makes those cars particularly rare. And here, a wonderful X fire department, a, a Factory Fire Department, a Ford Control Land Rover. That's very neat indeed. Peterborough Volunteer Fire Service, it says on the back. Again, really, really rare vehicles here at the NEC, a real variety too. Now we're over on the Singer stand. Wow, look at this Singer Gazelle. That's quite an early one. 6823 HP. There's a registration of that little beauty. And uh, well, there's a Singer Vogue estate there. Well, I'll get a closer look at that one also a little bit later in this collection. Next up, the Hillman Avenger Tiger. The souped up version of the Hillman Avenger, the four door Hillman Avenger. Quite a rare car now, that is. Mini light wheels, nice big Lucas lamps on the front as well. Very cool indeed. Okay, it's a pre war cars now. Ooh, isn't this nice? A pre 1940 Triumph Motor Club stand. This is a 1928 Triumph Super 7 Hoyle. Hoyle? Coupe. Lovely fabric body car there. There were some really nice pre-war cars there, which was a, which was really good to see because you don't see all that many 1920s and 30s cars. And look at this. This is one of my favourites of the sort of 70s, 80s era. A two-door Saab 99 Turbo. This has got the airflow body kit on it as well. It was in lovely, lovely condition. Ooh, an Austin A40 Mark I is next. This is the fairly rare Countryman. You can just see the rear hatch lifted up there and the illustration on the wall behind it showing how they had this split rear tailgate. Shades of uh, the later Range Rover perhaps there, but made the A40 a very, very practical car indeed. A gaggle of Mark I Fiesta here, the Super Sports no less. These are quite unusual as well. I imagine restoring one of these if you're missing some of that interior trim will be quite the challenge. Yeah, there's several really nicely preserved examples there on display. Oh, to the Morris J-Type stand, and this is in fact the Austin badge version. The Morris J-Type had an Austin equivalent, and this is a slightly different grille, and this was called the Austin 101.
Some Beam Talbot Lotus is next. There's a trio of them here looking very, very smart indeed. Quite popular in historic rallying now, rear wheel drive and a fruity Lotus engine up front. Makes for quite an exciting drive, I would have thought. And here we go, Sunbeam Venezia Superleggera, super lightweight. These were very, very unusual cars indeed, based around the, I think it was the Hillman Superminx, or so, yeah, what a rare, rare car that is. There's a bit of information about the Sunbeam Venezia Superleggera project commenced in 1961. Just pause the video for another read of that carrot here. Touring of Milan did the bodywork based on the Humber Scepter, rolling chassis with Superleggera bodywork. Wow, that's quite the car, isn't it? Launched 12th of September 1963. Okay, over to Classic Riley's now, and we have the Riley Pathfinder, or as it was unofficially nicknamed back in the day, the Riley Ditch Finder. Apparently, the handling wasn't all that great on these particular cars, but uh, most 50s cars didn't exactly handle as if they're on rails either, so it's probably slightly unfair. Back to the Ford Hall, and we have this lovely Ford Zephyr 6, the Zodiac, the top of the tree, two-tone paint, lots of chrome on there, we've got a sun visor as well, wing mirrors, and all the mod cons, white wall tyres as well, very, very nice looking car indeed, I do like those. Into the Japanese corner now, and we've got CDG 8K, a 1972 Honda Z600 Coupe, what a funny little car that is. Don't see those too often now. Maybe you've owned one of these. Let me know in the comments. It's always interesting to read your comments about the cars that feature in these particular videos. I'm sure many of you have had or experienced one of these, the Morris Ital, the revamped version of the Morris Marina. Surely some of you have had one of these, maybe the Salute or the Estate version even. Um, they were quite popular, lots of space, but yeah, from the glory days of British Leyland. And over in Vauxhall Corner, there were many, many classic Vauxhalls there, including this really rare Ventura Estate. When did you last see one of those? And what is this then? This is the Wolseley Mudlark. I think around 15 of these were produced as a bit of a trial, and it went on. It ended, ended up being sort of the predecessor, if you like, to the Austin Champ, hence sort of similarity in styling I guess but yeah this is the Wolseley Mudlark 4x4 proposal for a new vehicle for the army oh I do like these the Jensen 541R fiberglass bodied beautiful beautiful car with the BMC engine under that swoopy bonnet lovely car very appropriate registration as well TEA 541 and look at this whole squadron of Messerschmitt bubble cars on the Messerschmitt Owners Club stand. What a great display they put on. I'll take my hat off to all the people who exhibit at these huge shows. It's such a time commitment and an effort to take all the displays and so on, get the vehicles down there well in advance of the show. It's a three day show, this is. And look at this the Sunbeam, the 1927 Sunbeam, a thousand horsepower land speed record car. This car cracked 200 miles an hour, driven by Major Henry Seagrave. And there are plans to get the two 22 and a half litre engines restored in order that this can run again in uh, 2027 I believe. Okay, to slightly more recent times, about 1985, and we've got an E28 5 Series BMW, in particular the M5. Lovely car indeed, really nicely screwed together and they do drive well these do. Also at the NEC Classic Car Show, plenty of Granadas, and fairly early one here, PFC 8P, the Granada Mark 1 XL. And the Rover P6s were out in force at this particular year's event. A 3500S, an American spec car there, quite a few differences with our lamps on the front there. Very unusual to see one of those here in the UK. Very unusual wheels as well. What's the story with those? If you know what those wheels are with those very uh, pronounced spinners, let me know. And this caught my eye on the Renault Club stand. This is a lovely Renault 4 pickup. How cool is that on the classic Renault Club stand? No 4 CVs though, so maybe one day we'll have to do something about that.
Okay, back in the Ford hall, we've got a lovely example of the Ford Model Y here. The Ford 8, the 8 horsepower car, 933cc, little four cylinder side valve engine under that gleaming bonnet. This is one of the long rad cars. Old gaggle of Marcos is here as well. In all, there are about 300 photos in this particular collection. I, had, I took well over 900 photographs, so I had to whittle them down quite a lot, and that wasn't photographing every car by any means. I've got a lined up of Mark 1 Escorts here. So sadly, I couldn't include every car that I photographed, and I wasn't even able to photograph everything. But hopefully, this just gives you a bit of a flavour as to the event overall. But yeah, there's no substitute really for actually going along, but it's a long day. Ideally, you need two days to get around it all properly. There are many, many classic cars for sale at the NEC this year. There's a few of them here, just as, to give you an idea of the variety. A Mercedes SLK, a good old MGB Roadster in the foreground there. Bit of everything. Look at this, you don't see these too often, but yeah, it's a UK registered Peugeot 203. Quite a nice looking car, that is quite handsome. Not super expensive either, so uh, yeah, that was... One of those would definitely be on the, the short list if I decided to keep stick with something French but maybe a little bit larger than the 4CV. I'd definitely consider one of those. And we're back on the Austin Counties Club stand now. We saw the A70 Hampshire before and now this is the A70 Hereford Woody. Again, beautiful woodwork in, in, uh, on show there. What a great looking car that is. Really, really stylish. Many, many Jaguars, as you'd expect at a show like this. And here we've got a late 67 or 1968 Jaguar 420. Based on the S-Type Jaguar, of course, this was just like a bit of an interim model until such time as the XJ6 was ready to be launched in 1968. And there's also a huge turnout of Fiat 126s and Polish built 126Ps. This is a 126P uh, pickup. What a great little thing this is. This is a Polish market vehicle, I believe, but what a treat to see that. I've never seen one of those before. Your Nick Sunshine. There's a Wolseley 680, beloved of the Metropolitan Police Force in the early 1950s, late 40s, early 1950s, and it's great to see this preserved 680 on the Wolseley Cup stand. Great stuff. Back to Vauxhalls, and there's an HB Estate there on the left. I think we'll get a closer look at that one a little bit later. But in the foreground, an HA series Vauxhall Viva, complete with a pair of no-tech blue spot lamps on the front there. Really, really clean example of a really rare car now. Good old Roots Group again, the Hillman Super Minx. Very, very nice example too. The uh, the uh, Minx on alongside, we'll see a closer look at that one a bit later as well. Like I say, the order of this particular collection, I did mix it all up a bit, so we didn't have too many of the same cars one after the other, so it just sort of helps with the variety a little bit. Now in the furthest hall, there uh, was the Alpha Club stand, and there was this gorgeous Alpha Romeo 2600 Spider. Definitely one of the most stylish cars at this year's event. What a beauty that is. Even the detail on that indicator light on the front wing there. Beautiful, beautiful car. And how about this? What a cracker this is. The Tatra T97 of 1938. This was sold new to someone in Bratislava, apparently. Uh, and in the back there, there's an overhead cam, 1.7 litre flat four engine hiding in the tail of that particular car. But isn't that just a phenomenal vehicle? Many, many Rileys in attendance this year as well. This is the Riley RM Club stand, as you can see. And a two and a half litre Riley RM saloon there. Two and a half litre, you can just about see the pale blue badge on the top of the radiator. If that was dark blue, that would tell us that this has the one and a half litre, but this is the bigger two and a half litre car. Well, certainly there are many oddities there, and here we've got the Skoda 1203 van. This particular van dates to about 1976 or 77 apparently. Nice big side access door on this particular vehicle, but how cool is that? Again, I've never seen one of those before. What a fantastic little thing. When did you last see one of these? The Alfa Romeo 90 on a C plate, so that puts this one about 1985 or early 1986.
Carry on with this look around the NEC classic car show, we've got this, a somewhat modified Mark 1 version of the Triumph 2507 MOE is the registration number and it looks like it's got wider TR6 wheels on it, which I do have to say they really really suit it. How nice is that, what a lovely looking car. We'll be seeing a very early example of the Triumph 2000 a little later on in this collection. I said we'd show that Minx, well there in fact there were two Minxes near the Super Minx that we saw before. This is a really nice car indeed. This is 697 CKJ, a 1958 Hillman Minx. Beautiful two-tone paintwork there. What a great looking little car that is. I do like Roots Group cars. We're back on the Renault stand and the Renault 12 that you may have seen before in one or two of the uploads here on the old classic car channel. But it's such a clean, smart looking car that I'll feature it whenever I see it because it's just a great old survivor. How about this? LM7, an Aston Martin team car from 1931. What a Bobby Dazzler that is. Lovely sort of patina on there. I don't know how old that paint is, but it looks fairly old and it suits it just perfectly, I think. Twin hooters on the front as well. Quite a few old Volvos at the NEC this year as well. We've got a 300 series hatchback here. They also did the booted version, which you very rarely see now, but from memory, I think this is one of the hatchbacks. Quite a lot of imps here as well, celebrating 60 years of the Hillman Imp, judging by the sign in the background. This is the Hillman Husky. Of course, the Hillman Husky was based on the Minx back in the 1950s, but by the 1960s, it was based on the Hillman Imp. Rear engined, of course, so that did compromise the load bay a little bit, hence the really tall roof. Not all Sierra Cosworths are shiny and immaculate. And here we've got a great old example. I'm not sure what the story is with this one. Maybe it's been dragged out of a garage or a shed somewhere. But if you know what the backstory is of this particular Sierra Cosworth, please pop a note in the comments. I'd be interested to know. Not everything is car size at the NEC. And here we've got a fantastic Midland Red Motorway Express. Designed with a high-speed transit up and down the new shiny motorways of the 1960s. This one registered in 1965. What a treat to see a few commercial vehicles at the NEC this year. Back to Vauxhalls. And we've got a two-door HC series Vauxhall Viva. And some very wide-looking wheels. How about this? When did you last see a Wolseley 690? Very handsome looking car indeed. Who remembers these? The Wolseley Hornets, the Heinz convertible version. One of 57 built by Crayford, but never sold directly to the public. These were all competition prizes, these were. Registered 1966. There are quite a few Sunbeam Alpines at this particular event. PGJ2, that is a Sunbeam Alpine Mark III, dating to 1954. These were popular in yeah, a bit of competition work on the Monte Carlo Rally, that kind of thing. Look at all the louvers in the bonnet hinting at its performance capabilities. They were quite lively cars. Wow, RUF 851M. That's a pretty rare car. The Matra Bagheera, no less. Yornick Sunshine again. And we have a police spec Mark II Ford Cortina. Four door saloon. Nice wide steel wheels on that one. Please like and subscribe if you like this kind of thing. If you want to see more uploads relating to classic car shows, museum visits and so on, please let me know in the comments. But yeah, there are plenty of videos on here now. And look at this. There was a, quite a gaggle of these Enfield electric cars of the early 1970s on display. And there's all the information on that. Very useful sign on the side there. So pause the video and you can read that one. Built between 1973 and 1976 and 120 were made. A very clean looking Volvo 244 DL here on a V registration. It's got the later 
GLT alloy wheels on this particular car and these were based on the older 140 series hence the slightly boxy lines with a different front, different engines and so on so there's quite a lot of changes under the skin but visually they were very similar to the older 140s now they're over to Armstrong Sidley PEH a Staffordshire registered Armstrong Sidley Lancaster these were built from about 1945 through to about 52-ish I think this one we have seen at Bicester Heritage before now I'm sure it was this car Many, many minis, as we would expect. One of the later Mini Coopers in the foreground there, in immaculate condition. Details of the pricing in the windscreen there from when these were put on sale in the early 1990s. Back over in the Japanese corner, and we've already seen the little orange car on the side there, but in the foreground we've got a Honda N600 little two-door car there the front end very reminiscent I always think of the Mark II Austin A40 very rare sight in this country most of them have rotted away many many years ago now and probably the same applies to this one as well the super rare fastback Hillman Californian AMJ 382F so that's a late 67 or early 1968 car with that photo in the background that's our Coventry Motor Muse uh, Transport Museum as well Quite a few Reliance, there's a Middlebridge Scimitar just on the left there, but the white car is the Scimitar SS1. Now about this, a super clean example of the early VW Sirocco. So I couldn't feature every single car that was on display at this year's NEC but this should give you a pretty good idea of the kind of thing you'll find there it's a three day event so you know, bring some good shoes if you're coming and the Nova GSI next these are increasingly rare and increasingly sought after little pocket rocket based on a Vauxhall Nova Good old little Thames 300E van here. Those different wheels and especially wide wheels on the back suggest things are perhaps not as standard under that little bonnet. Who knows the story of this particular car. How about this? A super original looking XJ6 Series 1. I think this was a 4.2 litre car. It's on the later Kent alloy wheels that were available on the Series 3s. That's a very rare survive and it didn't look bad at all. They are a bit prone to rusting, but this one didn't look like a bad basis for a restoration at all. Look at this, you see plenty of Austin 7s, but this is the four-door Austin Big 7. Probably the last of the line, really, of the original pre-war Austin 7s. HPD 594, I'm guessing that dates to about 1938, thereabouts, something like that. So it's like the larger four-door version of the Austin 7 Ruby, really. Several Gilburns were available uh, to view here at the NEC and in the foreground we've got a Gilburn GT and examples of the Invader a little bit further along. The uh, Gilburn GT was BMC powered, the cars further along were Ford powered. These were built in Wales. Now this was a real treat to see two photographs of this, the Peugeot 504 Brake Riviera recreation. This car was built up in recent times based on a car that was built in the 1970s but has long since disappeared but what a beautiful car this is. I think the project started out with a Project 504 Cabriolet and it was converted into this wonderful estate. Absolutely beautiful looking car. Such a handsome car that I think. Such a treat to see that. And the 504 registration plate as well. Is that a happy coincidence? But probably not. But yeah, lovely, lovely to see that car. This is a really strange looking thing, this is the Space Velo and this is based on the old Bowden Spacelander bicycle. I think this is a later recreation, several of these were built, I think there are fiberglass frames on them. So it's a pretty unusual vehicle and I think they only made a few of these. So yeah, very very rare sight indeed and look at this, this is pretty rare, certainly here. Perhaps not so in Australia because this is a Ford Zephyr Ute. A utility, the Australia market vehicle pickup truck based on the six cylinder Ford Zephyr. So, presumably, someone's imported this one at some point back to the UK. But what a treat to see that one here in Birmingham. 
And look at this, the Opel Manta, the i400 version of the Opel Manta. I remember having a ride in one of those in the early 1990s and it did go very, very well indeed. What a little cracker this is, a standard Vanguard, looks like a Phase 1A or a Phase 2 estate. How rare is that? And how practical, what a great thing that would be to own. Can you imagine rocking up at an auto jumble with that? Fantastic. Who remembers The Beast? This was built up in the early 1970s, I think, and it's got a 27-litre Merlin aero engine under that bonnet. And back in the day, it was timed at 183 miles an hour. This is the car when there was all the hoo-ha about Rolls-Royce complaining about their grill being fitted on the front of this one-off home-built car. Fantastic to see that. And look at this, just for a little added variety, a Ford's an E27N tractor. If you think you've seen those headlamps before, those are the same as fitted to the Ford Anglia that we had until recently. And also the E83W vans had those particular lamps on as well. Austin or Nash Metropolitans here. This was a car built by Austin on behalf of Nash in America. They wanted a small car so they came to Austin. Austin built it and they were shipped abroad. I think later cars were actually badged and sold here as Austins, but the early cars were badged up as Nash's only. A couple of Metro vans here, the Metro 310 van. Two rare survivors there. There's that Citroen H van, fantastic looking vehicle on the Citroen Club stand. In the foreground, a couple of cars, specials based on 2CV running gear. On the blue car, you can see the very distinctive 2CV wheels and the boxer engine hung out the front there. So that gives you a clue. And uh, if you heard it driving past, you'd be left in no doubt that it's based on the 2CV. And we're back on the Enfield stand and a part restored example of the electric Enfield of the early 1970s. Those hubcaps look very much like those fitted to the early Mini Clubmans. I'm sure that's what they are. We're over on the Morris Register stand. They had some fantastic early cars on display, including this 1933 Morris Isis 6. The Isis name would uh, feature on cars well into the 1950s, again six cylinder. But this is the early 1930s Isis 6. And what a cracking example that is. There we go, there is that Vauxhall Viva HB Estate that I mentioned a little bit earlier on. And there's a very smart HA alongside it, one of the deluxe versions of the HA Viva. And, uh, yep, we appear to have, under all this clobber, a mini estate, a little mini Clubman estate. Okay, next up we have the original Fiat 600 Multipler. This one dates to about 1964. What a great looking car that is. Of course, the Multipler name was resurrected a few years ago with an equally odd looking car in fact, but this is the original and uh, that is very, very smart indeed. I do like that one a lot. And how about this for inner city driving? The magnificent scooter car, one of several micro cars that were on display at the NEC this year. What a treat to see that. I've got a feeling I may have seen this one or very similar to it um, at Malvern many, many years ago, about 2005 or 2006. It could well have been this car. And a little Bedford HA van here. Who remembers these? These used to be everywhere. I seem to remember British Telecom had quite a few of these. Oh, back to classic Renaults again. And there's that Renault 4 pickup in the background. And in the foreground, a lovely example of the Renault 16. That's a very handsome machine indeed. I do quite like those. I think they're nice looking, very elegant looking cars indeed. But you hardly ever see those now either. Oh, the classic Trabant, the East German Trabant. The, the old smoky two-stroke. The very final cars actually had a four-stroke engine, regular engine out, I think, of a VW Polo. But the vast majority of the old two-strokers, and I'm guessing that's what we're looking at here. 
very neat little car. A bit like an E40 to look at, I always think. And how about this? Resplendent in brown, a Austin Maxi, one of, I think, three on that particular club stand that we saw this year. And the gaggle of Audi Quattros here on the club stand. Rally car on the background, road cars on the left, dating on the earth. The furthest one is B Reg, so that's about 1984, and then we're into the late 80s with the car nearest the camera. Classic Simcas, who remembers these? I think this is a Simca 1100 two door saloon. I think the last time I saw one of these was in North Wales Classic Car Show. If you've not seen that video yet, please check that one out. It's a bit of a rainy day. But there was a lovely example of a Simca just like this on display there. Jaguar E-types are out in force as always, but not many brown ones, so that's why I photographed this one, a brown Series 3. You can see the V12 engine there. Two of the four Stromberg carburettors are in sight there. Always a bit of fun to balance those four carburettors up. Lovely, lovely car. Could be auto or it could be manual. Not an Opel Manta, this is the Vauxhall Cavalier Coupe, which of course the body shell was shared with the Opel Manta, but this, as you can see, is the Vauxhall badge version on the P registration, so mid 1970s. Quite a rare survivor now. Ooh, back to Austin 7s, and here we have a cracking little racer. This is just the kind of car that we often see at the VSCC Prescott Hill Climbs or perhaps at Lowton Park. If you've not seen any of those videos yet, please check those out because you'll see quite a few Austin 7s in action. And they're always good value for money watching those out on these hill climb courses. Now to France, and we have WBP 938, a 1956 Citroën 2CV, engine size 425cc. Very nice. I've not seen one with that particular badge arrangement on the bonnet before. Is that a standard fitting for this era of 2CV? I'm sure someone who knows their Citroëns will be able to answer that one. Classic Reliant Scimitar GTE now. I think this is the SE5 or the SE5A series car. I like those period alloy wheels as well. Very, very sharp looking car as well. And there's that Middlebridge Scimitar in the background. And also a gaggle of Bond bugs. We'll have a closer look at those a little bit later on. And definitely one of my favourite cars of all, pretty much. The magnificent Alvis TD21. This is a very handsome car. Fixed head or open top versions were available. And I will have, if you like your old Alvises, keep an eye on the channel because I've got a very special video coming up looking at those Alvises. Not every car was restored at the NEC and <laughs> needing a little bit of TLC and up for sale was this Jensen FF. You can see the two sets of slats in the front wing there. That tells us this is the Ferguson Formula, the FF, the four-wheel drive version, if you like, of the Jensen Interceptor. Slightly longer front on the four-wheel drive car. Back to classic Renaults. And a lovely Renault 4 here. I like the roof rack and a GB plate on the top, spare wheel, and a jerry can on its side. So, yeah, looks like a very well-used example. Really, really neat little cars. I do like those a lot. Of course, there's always going to be quite a few American cars at the show, and representing them is this fastback Ford Mustang. In the background, we've got several cars there, the Lotus Europa, and uh, some more modern machinery as well. There are a few modern classics there, uh, but most of the cars are of interest to me. Quite a few Morgans as well. This is a flat rad Morgan, so-called, because of the shape of the radiator compared to the more regular Morgans that you tend to see. Sporty Vauxhall Viva now, the Brabham GT, or is it just the regular Vauxhall Viva GT? I think it's probably just the Viva GT, very nice. It's got some period Wolf Race alloy wheels on this one as well. Matte black bonnet, all looks very, very sporty indeed, just like the rally cars of the era. Quite a few VWs were in evidence as well, including this immaculate camper van based on a split window VW from 1964. this on the Prescott Speed Hill Climb uh, display stand. We've got this fantastic Bugatti Type 59. Just look at the 
beautiful wheels on there, fantastic. And we've got the twin wheel set up the back as well for extra traction. Um, very popular mod in the hill climbing world in the 1940s and 50s. Now this was definitely one of my favourite cars, a beautiful Saab 92. <clears throat> Apparently this was a prototype dating to 1949, but what a great looking car. The paintwork looked lovely and old, just nicely mellowed and just an incredible shape and just a real reminder of Saab's aircraft history. There it is, streamlined, very, very neat car. Apparently brought in from Sweden all, not all that long ago. Ooh, more A40 goodness. Uh, regular YouTubers may have spotted this one on the Rusty Nuts channel. Lovely Farina Grey Mark 1 A40 Farina with black roof and a few subtle engine mods on this particular car just to make it a little bit more drivable on a regular basis. It's always good to see a Mark 1 A40 out and about. Also on the Saab Club stand was the 96 V4 that's been turbocharged. Here's an underbonnet view of that particular car. This car has featured in a video on here before on the channel but not possibly an underbonnet view so there you go quite a complicated setup on that particular car it's a Ford derived engine under all that and here is that Viva Deluxe that we saw a moment ago when we photographed the, the Vauxhall Viva HB estate alongside and this is a closer look at the HA this is one of the upmarket cars the stripes down the side wheel trims also got some no tech lamps on the front as well About a Triumph TR7 rally car, no less. Very, very smart example there. Quite a few period rally cars on display this year, including this fantastic Triumph four cylinder car. Of course, there was also the TR8, which had the Rover V8 engine and the bonnet. This is the uh, engine derived from that of the Dolomite, I think. And we're over on the Ford side valve club stand, and in the foreground, a great, lovely blue Ford Pop 103E. And in the background, we've got a Prefect, well, in fact, a matching pair of Prefects 100E and the old sit and big prefect alongside that. We'll get a closer look at both of those a little bit later on in this video. Now about this, three wheels on this wagon, an N-registered Reliant Robin Van, no less. Quite a few classic Cortinas were in evidence as well this year. We've got a V-plate, so quite a late example of the Mark V Ford Cortina. This one looks like it might be the gear going by the little badge at the back of the front wing there, and hence the alloy wheels as well, which look very similar to those on many Granadas also of the period. A bit of pre-war goodness here. Austin 7s are plenty, in the foreground a chummy, and in the background a great little box saloon of about 1930 ish, 31, 32, something like that, pre Ruby anyway. More Hillman goodness here, and this is in fact the Singer version, the Singer Chamois version of the Hillman Imp. Rear engine, of course, and uh, yep, yeah, and uh, you can see the boot lid just open there. Well, I say boot lid, that's actually the engine cover, because of course these are rear engine. BCA is a registration, CA is a North Welsh series. Back to the Jowett, and we've got a Bradford van here, probably late 1940s, I would have thought. These were built in Yorkshire. You can just see the Jowett Jason alongside with that really slopey front end treatment. Really, really distinctive car. And how about this? The lovely Gordon Keeble. Don't see too many of these around. And there's a tortoise as the badge on the front there, on that yellow badge. You can see the silhouette of a tortoise. Ooh, more Tatra. You can see the other one on the left-hand side there. This car is a Tatra 603 with an air-cooled V8 in, in the back of it, hung out the back. You can just see the air intakes on the rear wings there. This car dates to 1964. What a great looking car. It looks very original, probably unrestored, but I bet that sounds nice. And who remembers the Alpha Sud, the Alfa Romeo Alpha Sud. This is one of the facelifted cars. Very, very nice indeed. Got the extra body kit. The earlier cars didn't have any of those wheel arch extensions or that big front spoiler either. So this is one of the updated cars. And there's the Alpha 6 part alongside it. One of two examples that are actually on display this year. 
Okay, back to Ford Hall, and we have an example, a lovely blue example, of the Ford Console Mark II. A gaggle of Bonds here, an early Bond micro car in the foreground, HSG 96. And a gaggle of Equipes or Equipes in the background, all Herald or Vitesse based, those cars are. Bit more American here from the late 1970s, a big Mercury four door sedan. Looks to be on wedding duty, judging by those ribbons. A very distinctive M mascot on the front as well, I've not noticed that before. More Morris Marina goodness here, an S Reg Marina Estate. Again, super practical. I always like a classic estate car. I always think they're so usable and so much rarer than the saloon versions, although no marina is exactly common now, but the estates must be much thinner on the ground than the cars are even. An Austin 7s, late and early. In the foreground, we've got the Austin 7 Ruby. We saw the uh, big 7 before, which was also on the same stand, but this is the Ruby, while behind it, the maroon car, is a box saloon. Again, about 1930, 31, 32, probably around there, the date. Quite a few Land Rovers also out this year, including this Series 1. Oh dear, not every car was immaculate. And <laughs> there's the remains of that Rover 10 in the background. But in the foreground, just look at that saddle. BMW 2002 Ti. Very rare car, very desirable car in good restored condition. But you do wonder what the future is for this particular car. Is it too far gone? Quite probably. With a lovely Vauxhall here from the 1970s, a VX490 based on the FE Victor series, I think this one probably was, but the VX490 was a sporty one if you like, with those road style wheels and so on. So yeah, a bit of performance there for the 70s Vauxhall buyer. Quite a variety of cars also on the 750 Motor Club stand. We've got a bright yellow MX-5 there, which we, of course we approve of that one, and a Lotus alongside that, but in the foreground, cracking the lost in 7. What a great little car that is. Oh, here we go, back to the Singer stand and the Singer Vogue estate, which was based very much on the Hillman Super Minx estate. They shared the same body shell and back end. Slightly different front end, of course, because the Singer Vogue had a very distinctive grille and the twin headlights either side. So from the front, it looked very different, but basically a Super Minx. Now, you don't see these too often either. The Austin E35 pickup. This is a factory offered vehicle. I think only about 435 or so of these were built, something like that. They weren't hugely popular back in the day because the load area wasn't very big at all. And uh, yeah, survivors have very thin on the ground now. There are lots of exotic cars at this particular event as well, as you would expect, beautifully restored. Um, I've not shown them all, of course, but I just had to show this one because look at the underside of that Series 1 E-Type fixed head coupe. Just in stunning, stunning condition. Ooh, the Volvo now, the mighty Volvo 262C, the Bertone modified Volvo, two door, low roof line, very heavy looking car indeed. This has got the American spec headlamps on it as well. It's on the W registration. So what would that be, about 1980, somewhere around about there. The classic Citroen here, this is the Citroen ID19. Quite a few of these were in evidence as well, the Sunbeam Harrington Le Mans, the fastback lift-up tailgated version of the Sunbeam Alpine. Of course the Alpine, the regular Alpine, was a two-seat open-top sports car, but also available via Harrington was this very stylish sort of fastback version, a bit like the GT6 to the Spitfire. Okay, back to Crayford conversions, and here we have the Mark 1 Fiesta Fly. Interesting, there's no rollover cage at all in this. I'm surprised by this point in time they didn't have to fix some sort of roll cage or roll bar behind 
they are front seats. Next up, the mighty Opel Monza GSE. Continuing our walk around the NEC, we have this, a G-registered Fiat Vignali Gamine, circa 1969. What's that in the background? The car on the left, is that a Noble? It looks like a little Noble micro car to me. Over on the Singer stand again, there's the Vogue Estates, but in the foreground, a lovely vintage Singer Junior. Our youthful assistant is quite fond of these Singer Juniors, he quite likes those, and that one will date to the late 1920s, about 1929 or thereabouts, I would have thought. Here's a family favourite from the 1970s, the Ford Cortina Mark III Estate. Again, the estate car versions are always much rarer than the saloons, and this is a very, very clean, tidy example. I do like that one a lot. A lot of the Mark III Cortinas you see surviving are the GXLs, the posh ones, but it's good to see one of the original, sort of more base spec, if you like. And look at this on the Hero ERA rally stand. Is this rally prepared 1939 Chevrolet Coupe? Very, very neat indeed. I think we've seen this one at Bista Heritage perhaps twice now. If you haven't checked out the Bista videos, the flywheel and the scramble meetings from 2023, please check those videos out because they were a lot of fun. Next up, Peugeot 309 on an LL registration. Lovely pre-war MG is next. Look at that uh, soft top there. It looks a bit like an umbrella. But this is GG4819 1929 MG M-Type. And these were based on the chassis and running gear of the old Morris Miner, the late 1920s Morris Miners. Suitably sported up though, and the MG badged. Okay, next up, a work in progress. Vauxhall Chevette four-door. Always good to see some of these cars being worked on. The restoration show. Uh, takes place at the NEC usually in March so that sort of kicks off the season if you like and you see lots and lots of restoration projects on display there so that's another favourite of mine. Now this, this was definitely in my top three of vehicles at the NEC this year. This beautiful Austin K-Series lorry from new and national benzol mixture fuel tanker. Absolutely stunning. I just couldn't stop looking at this. I photographed this from every angle. I've only included one picture here, but what a beautiful vehicle. And how about this? The Lotus Mark III, based on Austin 7 running gear. You can see the three stud wheel fixing there, which tell you that there are Austin 7 axles under there. And I believe the engine is also Austin 7, so 747cc, little side valve four cylinder unit. Early days of Lotus there. Back to Jowitz, and we have the really, really sleek Jowitz Javelin Saloon. How about one of these? A lovely little Rochdale Olympic. Very, very nice. Fiberglass bodied sports car, sort of late 50s, early 1960s, that kind of era. You could also get the Rochdale GT as well, which was very similar, but this is the Olympic. Very, very nice it is too. These can go very well indeed. Very lightweight bodywork, of course. A bit more classic VW goodness here. And look at this old split window. I wonder where this one was found. Looks to be in very, very original condition. Bit of an oily ragger, but that's fine by me. Side opening doors as well. I guess that makes it fairly rare. Back to the Ford side valve stand and we have this lovely example of the Ford Model C. So the Model Y alongside was the 8 horse car, 933. The Model C was the 10 horse car, which was the 1172 engine, which of course soldiered on for many, many years, uh, living out its days in the Pop 103E and such like. And here we are, SWG456, back on the Sunbeam stand. Another Sunbeam Alpine, lovely car. This one was first put on the road in June of 1954. Quite a gaggle of them in evidence this year, and it was great to see them. These are very, very handsome cars, I think. Lovely. I remember one of these being dumped down the side of a garage near where we used to go on holiday. Okay, uh, just as a bit of variety here, and the Sinclair C5. There was a number of these dotted around. 
the five holes that the NEC this year, but there's quite a gathering here. What's it say there? Coin operated C5. I wonder what the story is with that one. A more modern classic here, the good old Vauxhall Cavalier. I'm sure many of you watching this video will have experience of these Cavaliers not that many years ago. At one time they were all over the place, but now you very, very rarely see them. There is a Cavalier of this age in the driveway in crew. I've seen on many, many occasions, but it doesn't look like it's going anywhere anytime soon. And here we have the Wolseley Hornet, the upmarket booted posh version, if you like, of the Mini, of course. This is on a G plate, um, very, very similar to the Riley Elf. Uh, why BMC decided to build both the Riley Elf and the Wolseley Hornet, I'm not quite sure. Answers on a postcard, please. Uh, the Ford V8 Pilot, I was really pleased to see this one and have a chat to the owner of this old car it gave me a few tips about ours that we only bought fairly recently so it's good to see this one and have a quick peer under the bonnet and compare things with our own car lovely little alpine renault a110 here from the early 1970s very popular in rallying in the 1970s even now in historic rallying these do pop up from time to time very very nice indeed rear engine of course very lightweight and very very low these were also built in Spain. More Vauxhall goodness here, we have a Chevette Estate. That's very, very nice indeed. Back to lovely old Woodies on the Austin County's car club stand. And this magnificent Survivor is based on the Austin 16. So uh, the Austin 16 came out in sort of late 40s, that kind of thing. Very much pre-war looking, but actually a post-war only car. And this magnificent coach built example is probably a unique survivor now, I would have thought. There's that Skoda van in the background, the 1203, but in the foreground we have a K-plated Skoda. I think that's the S100L. Really, really neat little four-door rear-engined car on a K-plate. So that's probably, what, about 1971 or early 72, I would have thought. Over in the furthest hall again, definitely worth walking all the way over there. We've got three ENC, an AC Greyhound from late 1960. The Sunbeam Imp Sport is next. There were so many different variations of the Hillman Imp, and it's quite easy to get caught out. You've got the regular saloons and the fastbacks and so on. This is on a J plate, so about 70, 71 ish in date. But yeah, again, celebrating the anniversary of the Hillman Imp and the many derivatives of it. Ooh, look at this now. This is the recreation of the Mark I BRM V16, an astonishing racing car built about 1950. The original cars were V16, so 16 cylinders, one and a half litre overall capacity. So each cylinder was actually quite tiny. Really rev. The revs are just incredible. The noise is something else. Okay, and a great lineup of Opal GTs next from the 1970s. Really, really smart car. If you took the badges off, you'd probably never guess that was actually an Opal. Quite a few Ford Anglias in attendance as well in the Ford Hall, Hall 8 at the NEC. And this is an estate version of the 105E. We've got a van in the background as well, a little Thames 307E. Couple of saloons as well, so yeah, quite a mixture of Anglias this time around. Always good to see those out and about. And the MG Midget and MGB GT alongside it. Not quite sure what the yellow car is, I should know what that is, but it's probably a bit modern really. Um, I'm guessing an MG ZS perhaps. Ah, back to more familiar territory. We've got an XJR6, the six cylinder supercharged version of the X300 from the what, mid 1990s, something like that. The registration plate there is a private plate, so that doesn't give you any clues as to the date of this particular car. Really, really nice. These are available as manual or autos, the six cylinder cars. Now we've got two grey P6s there. They're both pre production prototypes, really, really unusual cars. The car on the left is a production 3500S. The manual version of the V8 P6. An assortment of Ford Capris here. A 
So apologies if I didn't include your car in this particular collection, it just wouldn't be possible to photograph every single car that was on display. There were so many here. If I'd done a walk around video, it would have taken me about eight hours. So <laughs> next up, we have a lovely Renault 8. Now, more often than not, when you see a Renault 8, it's one of the souped up Gordini versions, but this is a regular four door saloon, and it's really nice to see this one on the C registration. So, dates to 1965. 77 GYL is one of the original cars used in the Saint TV series. I think this was the second of the P1800 Volvos that they used. There's a big picture of Roger Moore there stood with this particular car. So yeah, that's got a bit of history, that particular Volvo. With old Citroen 2CV and the information board there handily tells us that this is a 1979 2CV6 Club in Azurite Blue. Very smart indeed. Several of these Daimlers were dotted around as well, the SP250 or the Daimler Dart as they were often referred to back in the day, fiberglass bodied, pretty wild looking styling, 2.5 litre V8 engine Edward Turner designed under that particular bonnet, shared with the V8 250 saloon and Mark II Jag look alike. A bit more police action here, We've got a P6 V8 in the foreground and a Triumph 2000 or a 2.5 alongside that. And the Renault Twingo. I was surprised how many of these, when we did our little trip in 2022 to France, uh, there is a video about that, I was surprised how many Twingos, these early Twingos, were still on the road. They seem to be soldiering on very, very well indeed. So they seem to last quite well. This is an early -ish example of a Twingo. And this is probably the most famous Austin A40 Farina of all. Zoe 778, the ex-Pat Moss rally car. I think it's about 1959, this Mark One. What an incredible survivor that is. It was in a terrible condition before Practical Classics took on the restoration of it in the early 1980s. There was even a book produced about that restoration. And here we have the Droop Snoot Vauxhall Sports Hatch. A couple of these live local to us, but I don't think this is one of them. I think this is another example. And there was a Droop Snoot Saloon, or Coupe rather, the silver car just on the left there, also on the same stand. Quite a few Capris, as I've said before, and here we've got the 280 Brooklyn's Corner. These were the last gasp, I suppose, of the original Ford Capri. Do look at that. Not just any old Citroen Light 15 ENE442. There's a Light 15 faux cabriolet or fake cabriolet of 1938. Love the wheels on that one as well. Very distinctive aluminium wheels there. I wonder what the story is of that car. Who did that coachwork? Was it Chaperon or was it Citroen? I don't know. Okay, Bond Bugs now. Plastic Fantastic from the 1970s. Back to classic Simpkers. We've got an early 70s K-plate Simca estate here. Very nice roof rack on that example. Very, very smart indeed. There used to be one this colour lived around here, but I haven't seen it for a little while. So maybe it's moved out of the area. Perhaps it's this car, I'm not quite sure, but it's always nice to see these slightly obscure to our eyes cars. And how about rarities? Talking rarities, what is this? This is an HE, HE1660 from 1929. That's got a six-cylinder engine under the bonnet, about 2.3 litres, I think it is. Very, very nice car indeed. That is just a beautiful vintage car. Like I said before, great to see these proper early cars. Another Alpine here, one of the Harrington Le Mans cars. Quite a nice car if you like your Sunbeam Alpines, but you're not keen on open-top motoring. Then perhaps you need to find one of these. Or just buy an Alpine with the regular factory hardtop on it. But yeah, these lift-back examples are quite nice. Quite a few classic rally cars as well, just on the walkway approaching Hall 8, where all the Fords are. And in their lineup was this lovely Mark 1 Ford Escort rally car here. Very nice, wide, mini light alloy wheels. Old gaggle of CB lamps on the front as well, the CB Oscars. Wonderful Sunbeam Alpine again here, MKV. 
95 or 85 I think is the registration number lovely lovely looking car that is again I think that's a historic period rally car I think that was actually racing in period you can see the Sheila Van Damme helmet just on the rear panel there okay back to classic French cars and we have the Ami Estate the Ami Brake very very neat indeed if you've seen any of the crew heritage videos that I did a little while ago you'll see there was an Ami 6 Brake there lovely very original looking car Back to micro cars, and this is the Bond 875. I think this was pretty much last of the Bond three wheelers. This one on a G plate, so about 1968. But you don't see these too often at all. I remember there used to be one of these that a dog used to live in up near Preston. We used to have relatives up there, and there was one parked in the garden. Okay, back to Matras. We saw the Bagheera before, and this is the Murina. Quite an unusual car, three abreast seating. And you can't say that about many cars this side of a McLaren F1 perhaps but yeah in terms of regular road cars this is a definitely quite an unusual layout inside and who remembers these quite a rare car now the Honda Accord Aero Deck it's amazing that any of these have survived really I'm sure finding parts of these this era of car is actually quite difficult now I would have thought Good old American pickup here, an old Ford V8 American pickup here from the 1950s. Very, very smart, bit of an oily ragger. Looks like it's had the boiled linseed oil treatment, which is what we tend to do here with our old clunkers. Back to Mark V Ford Cortina here on the Crayford Club stand, the convertible version, the Crayford convertible version of the Ford Cortina Mark V. How many of those did they build? I'm sure fewer than 100 of those were ever built and I bet the survivors you could probably count on the fingers of one hand now. This is a rare Volvo 140. This is the 144E which is a very unusual variant of the Ford 140 series and this used to belong to Leslie Charteris, the author of the original Saint books. Um, so we've already seen the Saint TV series P1800 parked over there in the background and that belongs to the author of the books. Okay, Morris Miners here. We've got a Morris Miner Traveller, a four-door saloon, and behind that, a great little van. You can always rely on the uh, standard club stand, the motor club stand, to uh, have something interesting there. And here we have a grey 1936 standard Flying 16 with a coachwork by Avon. Very swish looking motor car indeed. Probably the only one of those still around I would have thought. Can't be too many of those now. And a super clean Mark 1 Ford Capri next. There's another example in the background. You can just see a K Reg Brown example. And a Capri 2 just in the background to the left there. So yeah, quite a quite a variety of Ford Capris are in evidence across the Ford Hall at this year's NEC Classic Car Show. Here's one for sale if you fancy a little bit of a project, a Datsun 200C estate from 1975. Again, that's probably one of those cars where finding parts for it could be quite exciting. I think that would take a lot of trawling on the internet to find parts for that. Okay, RFM 130L, and quite a rare Austin 1300 GT, the sporty ADO 16. Quite a late car. They originally had the MG versions and so on, but I think they were dropped and then probably I think they were replaced by the Austin 1300 GT. Very rare car. Now, on the Di Tommaso Club stand, there were several Panteras early and late, but I had to photograph this one, the Di Tommaso Mangusta. I remember having a huge toy plastic one of these, also in orange several years ago. Great looking car, really, really great 70s looking car. Close-up view now of a lovely little Triumph as well, 200 CMX, a little TR3, I believe, with a narrow grill there. Triumph Stag, the V8-powered Triumph Stag there, up on lift, so you can have a good look underneath. Very, very clean underneath, in fact. Nice, nice car. The Mark II versions had those alloy wheels on them, and I think they also had stainless silk covers on the Mark IIs as well. So I'm not sure if this is a Mark I or a Mark II, 
I'm guessing as it's on the K plate, it's a Mark 1 but with the later wheels. Ford Model A's were also represented on the club stand. We've got DS7765 here, a Ford Model A Coupe or Coupe, two door Coupe. This one will probably date to about 19, it could be 29, 30, 31. Someone will know for sure because they did change slightly every year or so. Another ADO 16 here, the little Austin 1100 or 1300, this time a two door police spec car. Quite a few police cars at the show this year, which is quite nice to see. Not sure I've seen this one before either, a little panda car there. Some more micro car goodness here with the Trojan, the little three wheel Trojans. Back to classic Bonds for a moment here in this red car, this estate, which is very, very rare. I think I've seen this one at Malvern but a long time ago. This is a Bond Keep GT 2 litre Mark II dating to 1970. It was up for sale as well. Very rare Survivor Herald chassis hiding away under there. A bit of a project here, the Izetta bubble car. Quite a project but looks super original. I wonder where that was found. That looks like a great old Survivor. Looks like an ideal candidate for the oily rag as opposed to a full restoration. Interested to know what happens to this car, but yeah, that's great, that is. Wonder if it's a runner. Here's a very early example of the Morris Oxford MO now. I say early because if you look at the front corners of the bonnet, they curve down to a point, and uh, people would clobber their heads on the point of the bonnet when they had the bonnet up. So they soon changed that and they squared off the corners of the bonnet a little bit. So most cars have the squared off bonnets, but this is an early one. Okay, back to Austin 7s, and according to the information on the screen there, this little speedy, Austin 7 speedy, dates to 1934. This, I think, was the replacement for the Ulster, or the EA Sports, as it was called, the earlier car. But the early car was aluminium bodied. I've got a feeling the speedy was steel bodied. To BTCC now in the 1980s, that ex Steve Soper Ford Sierra Cosworth race car. Neat. Very, very neat indeed. I remember these Texaco sponsored cars on the TV on Grandstand, BBC Grandstand Sport Programme on a Saturday afternoon, that kind of thing. A good old Morris Minor here. Wouldn't be a classic car show without a few Morris Minor thousands. We've got a very tidy two door example in white here. We've got XJ Coupe now, the two-door Coupe based on the short wheelbase Series 2 XJ of the 1970s. Bit of a restoration project this one. Clearly it's all been dipped and stripped and welded back up, so hopefully this one will be back on the road before long. Whether it's a six-cylinder or a V12, I'm not quite sure, but I'm sure someone will be able to tell. And here, the Console Classic, four-door Console Classic in the foreground, and next to that, the Console Capri, a very rakish looking car indeed. Really, really unusual cars, and one of those Fords. Not all Fords are super popular and highly, you know, highly valued. If you like, some of these are still relatively affordable. Okay, we're back to Austin Sevens now. This little car dates to 1932, and this is an Austin Seven milk delivery car. You can see the uh, the milk churn in the back there. How cool is that? I was mentioning Triumph 2000s earlier on, and this is the first, the first ever Triumph 2000. Apparently this was found in fairly recent times, and it's going to be preserved pretty much as is. I mean, quite how you'd slow down the rot, I'm not quite sure, but rather than fully restore it, the idea is just to preserve it as a bit of a time warp, as it's such a notable car in the history of the Triumph 2000. And now, a car from the 1970s, the Lancia Beta Berliner, or the Saloon. Uh, looking at the shape, you'd think it was probably a hatchback, but it isn't. It's got a little boot under the back window, if I remember correctly. These are very rare. I think Lancia ended up trying to buy most of them back and crushing them because they had such a terrible reputation for rusting. Quite a few Bristols on display this year as well. Ooh, and there's a Bristol 403 in the background. And in the foreground, a Cooper Bristol race car, Formula 2 race car. VW time now, and we've got a VW, this is a replica apparently, it's based on the 57 VW Beetle shell, but it's a replica of the much earlier KDF Beetles, uh, 
Um, but I don't know any more about that really. So if you can tell me any more about this particular car, the build, um, let me know. Okay, now serving coffee was this, a Larder Neva, a four wheel drive Larder Neva. So it's been a while since I've seen one of these out and about and in that greeny colour it just looks right, perfect for a bit of off-roading and apparently these are actually quite good cars off-road. You know, some 4x4s aren't that hot but those are quite handy in the mud. But not so handy in the mud but looking glorious and looking lovely in that very pale shade of green metallic is this XK120 fixed head coupe. Beautiful looking car. Corvette Stingray next, the Chevrolet Corvette, really, really eye-catching machine, fiberglass bodied of course, huge V8 engine hiding under that bonnet, quite a few Corvettes were on display this year. Over to the Morris Commercial Club stand, and there's that, there's that lovely Austin, I can't get over that National Benzol fuel truck. In the foreground here we've got the Morris Commercial, the LC series, probably an LC5 I would have thought of the 1950s. Quite a bonding little lorry, Greengrass used to drive one of those in the Heartbeat TV series if you remember back to those days. Okay, a bit more classic Vauxhall goodness here, we've got a Vauxhall E series Cresta from the 1950s. Lashings of chrome, two-tone paint, very very eye-catching car indeed. Here's a bit of an unusual car, conversion of the Renault Alpine or Alpine GTA Turbo. Soft top conversion, very few of those were made. I think it was a dealer in Germany, a Renault dealer in Germany undertook this conversion back in the 1980s, I suppose. Uh, good old standards, here we are, the little standard eight, very similar to our own little car, similar age. Mid 1950s rival, of course, to the Austin A30 and the Austin A35. This had the 803cc engine. Great little run around these are. Okay, VW Golf next. We've got a very original, very straight looking Y plate Mark 1 three door VW Golf and not a GTI, which is, uh, makes it a little bit more unusual. There's a very modified example alongside that, but I just had to grab a snap of this super clean white example. And who doesn't love a car that you can all relate to. This is the Skoda Favorite Estate. Just the kind of car that you would have seen on driveways up and down the country, but now hardly ever. But yeah, it's lovely to see this grey estate car. I think that's a Wartburg parked alongside. I think there might be a better photo of that later. There were all sorts of cars up in the auction area as well, but it was so busy I couldn't really photograph much of the auction area, I'm afraid. But uh, yeah, there was certainly plenty there, including this gaggle of fast Fords. How about this? I saw one of these driving on the M54 recently, the magnificent Mercedes 600 Grosser. An incredible car, really incredible, and incredibly complicated as well to keep them running by all accounts. So, uh, definitely one of those cars I'd like to have a go in, but I'm not sure I'd actually want to own one. Quite a few Austin Healy's were at the show as well. We've seen that BM1 in the background already, that special. And in the foreground, an Austin Healy 3000 on a 1966 registration. Very nice indeed, this big straight six three litre BMC engine under there, could be twin or triple carburettors. And who remembers these, the little Rover Saloons, a 200 series, and this is the Vandenplast, the upmarket version of the little Rover Saloons. A little Fiat 126. This is quite an early one, early 1970s. A lovely, lovely little survivor that is. I do like those little lamps on the front as well. Those hubcaps, those wheel trims are a bit unusual as well. I wonder where they came from. Some VW base buggies here as well. There's a Wartburg in the background. Who remembers these? The Mini Marcos Mark III. Um. 
or Jowett goodness here, and this is the Jowett Jupiter, very similar under the skin to the Javelin Saloon that you can see parked up there. But these are quite sporty as well, and again, quite popular in competition like these Sunbeam Alpines that we saw before. Back to the Sidevale Ford Club, and I promised you a better look at this E493A Prefect LOV526. I don't think I've seen this one before. Very distinctive two-turn paint scheme on this particular car. That's got the 1172cc side valve engine under its bonnet. The engine that, as I mentioned before, made its debut in the Model C. Here we have the Citroen SM, a collaboration between Citroen and Maserati. The Maserati V6 engine hiding away under that long, long bonnet. Really swish motor car, but quite a tricky old car to keep running now, I would have thought. Very, very complicated under that bonnet. Talking of under that bonnet, we have the Mark III version of the Triumph GT6. Harley did a video recently about the Triumph GT6. Check out the Car Traction channel for that. And here is a lovely example here, showing off just how easy it is to get at the engine and the running gear on these great cars. A bit more Hillman Minx goodness here with LCH344, another example from the 1950s. Another gaggle of Minis, including a Police Spec Mark II Mini on the left there, and an earlier Mark I on the right, the blue car. Now, what do we have here? If the shape looks familiar to you, it probably will do, because this is the Panther Rio based. It's a very heavily reworked version of the Triumph Dolomite. And who remembers these? The very distinctive Zagato bodied Alfa Romeo SZ. This was in the auction area, as was that brown Alfa Romeo Montreal parked alongside. Which one would you take? I think I'd probably go for the Montreal, if I'm honest. Ooh, look at this, isn't this lovely? We've seen this somewhere before, possibly at Chumley, at a classic car show there, perhaps. An Austin-based little coach, very, very nice indeed. It may also have been at the Flandidno Transport Festival that we visited earlier this year, so check out that video if you haven't seen it yet. But that's a, what a cutie that is. Ah, there we go, there's that Wartburg that we keep seeing in the background of the photographs. Quite a rare survivor. You don't see many of those here in the UK. They weren't that common even in the day. But I'm guessing this one's probably been imported more recently. Ooh, back to pre-war cars, pre-war Triumphs in particular. And this is a Gordon England bodied Triumph Super 7, dating to 1913. Again, fabric body covering. Yeah, that's a beautifully restored little car. Regulars to YouTube may well recognise this old Panhard. This is Tasty Classics old Panhard. He's got this one running and hopes to run it in its oily rag form. Bit of work ahead there, but it does run, kind of. So it's great to see that one at the NEC this year. It's also neat to see this, the wonderful Indian motorcycle. There's the Wall of Death, it says on the side there, because these were very popular in the Wall of Death um, displays when they're travelling fairgrounds and so on. I think something to do with the car is that they would actually run with the bikes on the wall, running around the Wall of Death. There we go, look at the <laughs> mighty, mighty Cadillac hearse, finished in white as opposed to the usual black. What a, what a eye-catching and distinctive car that is. Not sure if I particularly want to ride in it, but um, yes, it's uh, really interesting to see one out and about. Okay, slightly more familiar territory now. We have a Y-plate MGZT, the MG souped up version of the Rover 75. Back to pre-war years, and here we've got an Austin 12.4 New Ascot. This car dates to 1938. 
Now unusually for an American car, I knew exactly what this was as soon as I saw it. This is a Kaiser Darin from 1954. It's only 435 of these were built. Fiberglass body, 2.6 litre straight six engine. And what an incredible looking car that is. Such a treat to see these properly rare cars. And there's a rear three quarter view of the same car. Presumably imported to this country in more recent times, but what a what a cracking thing to see that is. I'm so pleased to see that. Look at the shape of those rear lamps and the size of that rear bumper. Can you imagine the price to re-chrome that rear bumper? Wow. Very distinctive wheel trims as well. Back to more sober vehicles now, and we've got classic hearses in the foreground, the Wolseley-based hearse. Is that a 6110 perhaps? I'm guessing. There's a Mark 1 Granada hearse alongside that, possibly by Coleman Milne. I think they did quite a few Granada conversions back in the 1970s. And the good old Austin Allegro. We've had marinas, we've had uh, other BL cars, and it was time to have an Allegro. This one, I think, is Harvest Gold, the same colour as Dad's MGP GT. And there we go, a better look, as promised, of the 100E Ford Prefect on the Ford Side Valve Owners Club stand. Some mighty Nissans now from the 1980s. I think these are 300 Cs. Big, comfy, wafty cars. Pretty reliable though, so. Uh, no doubt they were popular back in the day, even if they weren't huge sellers here in the UK. A couple of classic MGs here. We've got an MG TD from the early 1950s on the left hand side there, and from the sort of mid 1950s, just before the MGA came out, we've got the MG TF. Now here's a proper rarity, I did a video all about old Singer photographs recently and this is an SM1500, what a rare car this is, dates to April of 1952, such a rare survivor this one, I was so pleased to see this car because I've only really ever seen these in old black and white photographs. Quite a few old go-karts are on display as well. This is Jensen Button's old go-kart from when he started out his racing career. There's a very young, some J young JB in that black and white photograph there on the left-hand side. Quite a few P4s are in evidence as well. And this is a fairly early example, mid-1950s at a guess. Just post-Cyclops model, I think, this particular car. Really, really nice. Note the suicide doors, rear hinged back doors on these particular cars. Okay, Leyland Princess time. There were several princesses on display. And here are two of them on the Leyland Princess Enthusiasts Club stand at the NEC. And as I said before, the, the dedication that people have to put on these cars and bring these cars to display them here for several days at the NEC is really to be commended. And here we are in the sales area, classic cars for sale as far as the eye can see and in the foreground an MGA Roadster with an Arcelli tuned MGP GT parked alongside that. Now to Bristol 1953 according to the information sheet there, a 1953 Bristol 404, the two litre car Six cylinder engine, 70th anniversary. First owner, Billy Cotton, the band leader. There's a name from the past. To BMC Products now, and a lovely little two door Austin A35 saloon in black. There's an A35 van alongside with added rear side windows. Still quite a few vintage and classic cars to come in this particular upload, so thanks for sticking with it. And here, an Alfa Romeo Spider, Very swish looking little car. This is one of the later cars with the squared off rear end, the cam style rear end if you like. But yeah, really, really nice. More Ford action here, a 1990s Ford Granada. I think this is the Granada Scorpio. Well, please correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, rapidly disappearing sight these are. How many people are actually saving these now? A 
Back to ADO 16s, the good old 1100s and derivatives of this is the Vanden Plast 1300 PKD 412. That's not its original registration number. These were available as manual or autos. The autos were single carb and the manual cars were twin carburettors. So they probably went quite well indeed. Oh, look at that. V8 Ford Woody BOR 594. This one dates to September of 1936. And that's got a very similar flathead V8 engine to that in our Ford Pilot. And that is just a stunning looking vehicle. There's quite a few Woodies on display this year, which was great to see. Classic Hondas now, the S800 Coupe in the foreground there. Looks like a race prepared Honda S800. There's that little 600 alongside it. Classic Zodiac here, the Mark III version of the Ford Zodiac of the early 1960s, the one with the fins. Six cylinder car, that particular one. Classic Triumph TRs now, and the nearest the camera, we've got the first right hand drive Triumph TR2, according to that very useful information board in the background. And behind that is an early example of the TR7 Drophead Coupe. So, two very significant Triumph TRs there parked together. Now we've already seen the Panther Rio, which you can just see in the background, but this, this oddball looking machine, dates to about 1989 or 1990. It's the Panther Solo, a Ford powered car. Very, very unusual. I've not seen one of these for a long, long time. Probably 30 years since I last saw one of these. So it was great to see that one. Okay, pre-war Austins here on the Austin 10 Drivers Club stand and two examples of the 32 to 34 Austin 10 for the Chrome Rad Saloons. Great to see those two out and about. And also great to see them both on their correct original registration numbers as well. They've not been robbed off them, which is great to see. Okay, most of the MGs were quite sporty, uh, open top cars, but this is the MG, I think this is in the 1880 Saloon. Beautiful looking car, I think we've seen this one. Either at Loton Park, the VSCC Loton Park Hill Climb, or possibly the Prescott Hill Climb. But yeah, we have seen this one once or twice before, but a beautiful car. And this takes me back, I've had a couple of Volvo PVs, this one had sold, um, probably the day before I went. And this is a Volvo PV 544 with a B1800, uh, B18, 1800cc engine under the bonnet. Could be twin carburettors as well, which uh, probably goes quite well and very popular in the historic rallying. Back to Armstrong Sidley's now, and here we've got the Armstrong Sidley Sapphire. Ah, the good old MG Midget, the 1500 rubber bumper version of the MG Midget with the 1500cc engine lifted from the Triumph Spitfire. So rivals back in the day, but actually with the same engine under their bonnet, uh, which was uh, yeah, typical of BL thinking really at the time. A bit more marina action here. Got a very clean looking white four-door marina saloon with matte black bonnet. Very reminiscent of the old rally cars, but I don't think this is a rally car. This one pops up on YouTube from time to time. I've seen this one before. Oh, lovely pre-war Morris here. This rarity, this fabric bodied two-door saloon. This is a Morris Major 6 Salonette. Really, really swish looking motor car, that one. Next up, well, we all know what this is. This is the Morris Minor. This is quite an early one, the Low Light MM. MXS286 is the registration number. The Morris Minor first came out in this guise in 1948. And I'm guessing this car probably dates to 48 to 52, somewhere around about that date range. Lancia Fulvias, you do see pop up at classic car shows from time to time, but not so often the Fulvia Berlina, the four door saloon version of the Lancia Fulvia, so yeah, I was really pleased to stumble across this one. Very, very handsome, square-rigged, three-box saloon. Nice, nice car. An old gaggle of Ginettas here on the Ginetta Club stand. Really neat little cars, these are. What model is this car in the foreground? If you know, please let me know, pop a note in the comments. It's always good to read your comments about the cars that feature in these videos. 
Here's a very famous Shelsley Special, as they call them. Sort of one-off cars. This was built by Basil Davenport pre-World War II. The GN Spider. This is lovely. Very, very historic little race car, this is. You can see all the old black and white photos of it there back in period. Somewhat newer and not quite as rare, but, you know, pretty rare now. A variety of maestros there. MG maestros of different ages. There's quite an early silver car at the back there. And behind, you can just make out the maestro-based van. Again, something of a rarity now. This is the Jensen Healy showing off its Lotus-derived engine. Just a few more cars to go. A Jaguar Mark II. I haven't featured one of these yet in this particular classic car upload, so thought it was high time to do so before we're finished and there's a very smart 205 GTI alongside it I do like those little Peugeots in that shade of blue very very sharp looking hot hatch a couple more Land Rovers here the car in the foreground the grey one is a series 2 Land Rover of the very early 1960s I think probably in date yeah very very nice condition as well This looks very much like a Daimler, but it is, in fact, a Lanchester, the LA14 Road Rider Deluxe of 1938. Of course, the two companies were much the same at the time, Lanchester having been taken over by Daimler by this point in time. Rover SD1 here now from the 1970s. Very, very classic green in colour as well. I'm not sure what that colour is called, but yeah, I remember seeing lots of SD1s in that colour back in the late 70s, early 1980s. A brace of classic Fiat Pandas here now. Several of those were on display here this year. Another beautiful example of the four-wheel drive Jensen FF. There were several interceptors on display and we saw that restoration project FF much earlier in this particular video. And this is a beautifully restored car in a very fetching shade of metallic blue, showing off its Chrysler V8 engine. Lovely. And to round out this walk around, this look at just some of the cars at the NEC Classic Car Show this time around is a 1964 TVR Grand Tourer. What a cracking looking little car that is, I'm sure. That's a lot of fun to drive. So thank you very much for watching this upload of the 2023 NEC Classic Motor Show. I hope that was of interest. And uh, yeah, sorry if I didn't include all the cars. Um, but if I'd done a walk around video, it, like I said before, it would have probably lasted for eight or nine hours, which I don't think many of you would have stuck with. So I think this was probably the best way of going about it. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out the rest of the channel if you're new here or if you haven't looked uh, some of the older videos for a little while and uh, like subscribe all that kind of thing really helps the channel continue to grow so thanks so much for this one more videos along very very soon so bye for now